Hello everyone, I'm Leanne Punt, Extension Educator with Yukon Extension. Today we are going to talk about the use of sticky cards as part of your IPM program. After this video, you will be able to know how to use sticky cards and identify some of the more commonly observed winged insects that are trapped on sticky cards. So, let's get started. Yellow sticky cards are best used for general pest monitoring because bright yellow is attractive to many insects. Blue cards are more attractive to thrips and may be used to detect low populations of thrips on thrips sensitive crops. Most greenhouse growers use 3 by 5 inch sticky cards. Sticky cards, in combination with plant inspections, can help you detect pests early and more effectively. Some growers place large sticky cards that are 16 inches by 8 inches or long ribbons of sticky tape that is known as hopper tape to mass trap out dispersing thrips. Hopper tape is placed along the post on gutter connected greenhouses just above the crop canopy. Use at least three to four cards per 1,000 square feet, or a minimum of one card per 1,000 square feet with additional cards placed near doors, vents, and sidewalls. You can also place extra cards over especially problem-prone species or cultivars. Place sticky cards in a vertical position just a few inches above the crop canopy. As the plants increase in height, move the card upwards on the stake. To monitor for adult fungus gnats, horizontal placement of the cards just above the growing media is more effective than vertical placement. Storing the sticky cards in a dedicated refrigerator helps make the cards less sticky and easier to use. Monitor cards weekly to track trends in pest numbers. Change the cards weekly. Inspect cards at about the same time each day to make the results comparable among sampling dates. Sticky cards only trap the adult flying stages of thrips, white flies, fungus gnats, shore flies, leaf miners, leaf hoppers, and aphids. They will not attract the immature stages of these insects, nor pests such as spider mites, broad mites, mealybugs, scale insects, and non-winged aphids that do not fly. Many insects, including harmless and beneficial insects, may also be caught on the sticky cards. So correct identification is always important. Here are a few tips for identifying some of the more common pest species found on the sticky cards. First, you will need magnification, which is helpful to see their identifying characteristics. Use a 10 to 20x hand lens. A hands-free optivisor makes it easier to see the entire card. Hand lenses and optivisors now have LED lights, which helps you better see the insects. If you need help with identification, you can collect the cards and wrap them in a clear, non-clingy saran wrap to send to an extension entomologist. Don't try to remove the insects from the sticky cards. Their identifying characteristics, such as wings and antennae, will be destroyed. Aphids have pear-shaped bodies with two cornicles, or tailpipes, at their rear. Their legs and antennae are long and thin. Their wings tend to be spread on either side of their body. Look for two parallel veins close to the edge of their wings with a darkened area. Adult fungus gnats are small, dark, mosquito-like flies with grayish wings. They have long, slender legs and antennae. Look for a distinct Y-shaped vein at the tip of their single pair of wings. Sometimes their bodies may be humpbacked, but this depends upon the species of fungus gnat. Shoreflies are a robust, dark fly with bristle-like antennae. 
Each grayish wing has three to five pale spots. They have short, bristle-like antennae and moderately long legs. Shoreflies have a robust, stout body compared to adult fungus gnats and are about the size of fruit flies. Shoreflies are often found near algae, which is their food source. Adult moth flies are small, fuzzy, dark-colored insects with their body and wings densely covered with hairs. Their wings are held roof-like over their body when at rest, giving them a moth-like appearance. Moth flies are not a plant pest, but they may be seen in areas with poor drainage where fungus gnats and shore flies also occur. Thrips are generally the smallest insects you will see on the sticky cards. Thrips are narrow, cigar-shaped insects. Look for their red eyes, short antennae, and fringed wings with hairs on their end to distinguish thrips from any grains of peat moss that may be splashed on the cards. White flies are slightly larger than thrips. Look for their whitish bloom, which tends to disappear after a few days. White flies will become more orange in color as they blend into the sticky material on the card. Banded winged white flies are similar in size to greenhouse white flies. Look for the two grayish bands that form a zigzag pattern across each front wing to tell banded winged white fly from greenhouse white fly. They enter greenhouses from outdoor weeds, especially pigweed and ragweed, in the fall. Banded winged white flies are not a pest of poinsettias, so do not include them in your white fly card counts. Adult leaf miners are small, mostly black, robust flies with a noticeable yellow patch on their thorax. They have a short antennae and two transparent wings. Leaf miners have a large cannon-shaped structure at the end of their abdomen that is used to puncture leaves and lay their eggs. Look for the yellow patch on their body plus the characteristic plant damage. Leafhoppers are slender insects with their wings held roof-like over their abdomen. They are wedge-shaped, tapering to their rear. Their color varies depending upon the species. Leafhoppers are generally not a greenhouse pest, but they may migrate into greenhouses from the outdoors and get trapped on the sticky cards. Hunterflies may be introduced into a greenhouse on incoming plant material. These generalist predators feed upon fungus gnats, shore flies, moth flies, white flies, and leaf miners. Their wings are uniformly clear and they do not have the pale spots like shore flies do. Hunterflies may also be almost twice as large as shore flies. The males are a lighter gray than the females. Many different Hymenoptera species occur, ranging from slender to stout. In comparison with flies, wasps usually have longer, often elbowed antennae, and their bodies may be more tapered or pointed toward their rear. Many parasitic wasps have mostly clear wings, often with only one distinct angular vein along the front of each forewing. The hind wings often have no obvious veins and are smaller than the front wings. Train your employee scouts and give them specific directions. Often it's a balancing act between the time available and what data you really need to have to make a pest management decision. Estimates can be helpful. You can also focus on the pests that may be more of a concern for you. For example, fungus gnats and shore flies in propagation houses, thrips on spring crops, and white flies on poinsettias. Here's a sample form that you can find in the description of this video. 
Many growers develop their own Excel worksheets to collect data that is converted into weekly graphs for decision making. As more growers are using biological controls, the use of sticky cards needs to be fine-tuned. If you're releasing biological control agents with a wing stage, either reduce the number of sticky cards used or eliminate their use. Adult parasitic wasps will be caught on the traps. If you are seeing a lot of beneficial hunter flies on your sticky cards, which by the way you haven't paid for, you'll want to remove the cards because you don't want to trap out such beneficial flies. Talk to your biological control supplier for their advice. Remember, if you are primarily using predatory mites that do not fly, they will not be caught on the sticky cards. 